Hey Swifties, welcome to a brand new episode of Swifty School, where together we walk down Ilya Street covering the latest news and Easter eggs from our fearless leader, Taylor Swift. I'm your host, Reagan Bailey, and it is enchanting to have you here. Now that we're out of the woods, let's get into today's episode. It's another great day to be alive at the same time as Taylor Swift. Hi, everybody. Wow, wow, wow. Happy April. But before we get into the episode, quick disclosure because, hey, kids, legal stuff is fun. (laughs) This podcast, as you guys know, is purely an expression of my thoughts and opinions. And while I wish it was affiliated with Taylor or Taylor Nation, it is not. And without further ado, let's talk because, oh my God, today ended up being one of the most like spontaneous afternoons I've had in a long minute, long while, long minute, same thing. So we all know the iHeartRadio Awards for this week. That's great. That's fine. I feel like award show season has been about 62 months long and everyone's kind of over it. Totally fair. Do I usually tune in to award shows? Mm, Not as much as I have the past year, I guess, because let's be real. They're kind of boring. Unless I'm like super excited about someone who's performing. Like I was super excited about the I'm Just Ken performance at what? What was that? The goal, the Grammys? I can't even keep my performances straight or words so straight. But anyways, if I'm excited about like something particular, I'll watch that. But nowadays with social media, I'm like, you don't even have to watch it. Literally in real time, someone's bound to post about something regarding the awards. So I usually just tune into that. That's a long-winded way of saying I am only aware of all the award shows happening currently because of obviously Taylor and all of the things happening there. And it's a fun way to look for Easter eggs and see how she's utilizing these public appearances or lack thereof. So speaking of iHeart, I feel like we're kind of at the tail end or we pretty much are at the tail end of award show season. We obviously got a lot from Taylor at Golden Globes, Grammys, but I feel like iHeart is interesting because she typically attends iHeart Awards. It is a fan-based or fan-driven award show, and iHeart as like a company or organization has been obviously very supportive of Taylor. Taylor's performed at Jingle Ball many times. I've seen Taylor at Jingle Ball. Wango Tango is not related to iHeart, is it? I've seen Taylor at Wango Tango, but I think Wango Tango might be a different Anyways, I digress. So, anywho, we know that iHeart's happening tonight, and you guys know I live in Los Angeles, and let me just give you the lay of the land when it comes to Los Angeles, because something could be two miles away, and that could be 40 minutes. It really depends on, like, time of day and where you live, like, location-wise. It's very much like New York, if you're familiar with New York. It's not size-wise like New York. LA is, like, you could fit 15 Manhattans in LA, but the thing like Manhattan, is that there's different neighborhoods or boroughs. We don't call them boroughs here, but neighborhoods or pockets where you kind of stick to your area. So people will say like, oh, I live on the west side. And when people say I live on the west side, obviously they live like in Santa Monica, Venice, Sautel, Century City, like anywhere kind of over there near or to the left of the 405. And then anybody who's like, oh, I'm in mid-city would be like kind of closer to the 10 highway, which is like below West Hollywood, below Beverly Hills. And then there's people who are like, if you live in Hollywood, some people will say like, oh, I live near the boulevard. A lot of people will say like, I live in West Hollywood, Hollywood area. So anyways, I'm not going to tell you exactly where I live, but I will not make the trek to, let's say, downtown Los Angeles. Number one, because it's a scary place to be in general. But number two, because downtown LA, while it might be six miles, eight miles away, It could be an hour and a half to get over there if it's the wrong time of day. So with these sort of award show things, like a lot of them, uh, most of them happen in New York and L.A. And if they happen to be in Hollywood, which is not far from me at all, that I will make the quick jaunt over. And I honestly almost didn't. And I'll tell you the whole story. So I it was like 2.30 p.m. I had just gone to the dermatologist and I called Matt and I was because I knew he'd been out and about today. And I'm like, hey have you driven past the boulevard? Like, is it crazy or is it shut down for the iHeart Radio Awards? And he's like, oh yeah, it's crazy. There's been people out there all day. So I was like, "Eh, I don't know. And just to give you perspective, the Dolby Theater, which is on Hollywood Boulevard, kind of like right in the center. And this is not to persuade you to visit Hollywood Boulevard whatsoever because it is truly nothing to marvel at. Honestly, it's kind of spooky, especially at night. But Hollywood Boulevard right in the center is the Dolby Theater. And Anybody can can access it during the day, but there are constantly like 
two times a week, premieres or events happening there. And so the street gets closed, which is really frustrating because that is like the major, major entrance point for the 101 freeway, which goes all throughout Los Angeles and like up into the valley that literally a bajillion million people use this highway entrance. Now, the problem when there's premieres happening on Hollywood Boulevard and the boulevard gets shut down or like shut down to one or two lanes is that it creates traffic, obviously, on the other streets. But then also another issue that you can run into is further up that road is another venue, which is the Hollywood Bowl, very iconic venue. And when things are happening both there at the Hollywood Bowl and on Hollywood Boulevard, it can just be like a recipe for disaster. So that's a long-winded way of saying Even though there's a lot of cool stuff happening there all the time, it's like very much a place that locals avoid because of how chaotic and crazy. Plus, you add all of that into tourism. It's like a major tourist area. So anyways, I was debating just making the trek in the first place. But Matt was like, you know what? It's not that far away. Like, just check it out. You'll regret it if you don't. Like, okay, cool. So I did not even change. Like, I was wearing this dress from going to the dermatologist, had on a little jean jacket and sneakers. And so I took the jaunt over to Hollywood Boulevard. As I'm like walking up, I'm like, huh, like it's not that chaotic for being like a pretty major award show. What was the award show most recently that was happening there as well? That one was crazy and totally shut down. But anywho, so as I'm getting closer, I'm like, okay, I'm getting closer and having no problem. Like typically if they really don't want people around, they will like block it off so you can't even get close. So I got completely like right up to the front of the theater where I could see like the tents with the red carpet happening and everything. And then they have basically the like long walkway entrance up to the stairs to get into the actual like Dolby theater where the iHeartRadio awards are happening. And then they have the yellow carpet there and there's barricades and like ropes. There's literally like one Usually if you've done anything like this or if you haven't, like it's kind of like a concert where like people will be right up against the barricade and then everybody lines up behind them and it's impossible to see. I'm very short. Thankfully, I had on platform sneakers, which worked in my favor. But I literally walked up and there was like one row of people. There was like people up against the barricade and then like maybe one extra row of people behind that. So barely like like I've seen way worse. So I was like, well, this was weird and easy and seems like a little too good to be true. As I'm standing there, kind of scoping out the scene, I'm realizing, like, I'm literally standing up against the carpet. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to plant myself and not move. Then, after, like, 15 minutes of standing there, and it was only, like, 2.30 p.m. at this point, and the award ceremony started at 5, so I figured, like, nothing really, nobody good was really going to come through the carpet for at least another, like, 45 minutes to an hour, because most celebrities, like we know, Taylor typically, like, runs in at the last second makes an appearance at the 11th hour just because of the pure chaos that it causes, which is totally fine and understandable. But I kind of knew I was signing up for a long haul here. And if you're watching this on YouTube or any of the videos watching back, I have a major, major sunburn right here on my shoulder because of how sunny it was. So I'm standing there and then the girl who is in front of me, who's like right up against the barricade, like literally cannot get any closer. She was like, oh, I'm actually like, I don't feel like standing here anymore. I'm going to leave. Do you want my spot? I was like, absolutely. So I was positioned perfectly because I was right next to a group of like paparazzi, like full, like professional photographer people. And so a lot of the celebrities were coming like directly up to them because they wanted to get or like they weren't going directly up to them, but they were like posing in front of them and stopping there because they wanted their professional photos taken. So I kind of knew and had like a good idea that I was in a pretty good spot. And then I was just chatting because I was there for like two and a half hours with random people around me. And the girl who was right in front of me, who was like actually standing on the carpet, I could tell she worked. She she had obviously a badge and was on the carpet and she was wearing all black and she kept taking videos the whole time. So I was like, hey, are you doing social media for the event? She ended up working for, I think it was E! News or something. But I'm like, okay, this is fun. This is great. And uh, everybody there was talking about Taylor. Everyone. There were so many people wearing friendship bracelets. I would say like 60% of the people, maybe maybe 70%. A lot of the people. Most people were talking about Taylor. I'm sure there were people that were there for other people. But most of the people that were around me had just like happened to be walking by. So I don't know if maybe people just don't care about IHR Awards or they typically like think of the bigger award, like the Emmys, Grammys, all that when they think of award shows. But if you're ever looking to like experience a red carpet, I feel like this would be a great place to start because it was extremely easy. The least chaotic red carpet experience I've ever had. I have experienced a few on Hollywood Boulevard, especially when I used to visit Matt before moving out here to LA. He moved here. That's my boyfriend, if you're new. He moved here about, what was it, like two years before me. And so on the weekends when we were just like 
you know, finding fun things to do, we would sometimes go down to Hollywood Boulevard and there was, I cannot remember what the premiere was. It must have been actually maybe an award show or some sort of event. You know what? It was a Star Wars premiere. That's what it was. And I did the same thing. Like I walked right up and was right up against the barricade. So yeah, that was a little bit of a whirlwind experience. And then obviously Taylor didn't make an appearance, but there was tons of other celebrities. Katy Perry, Ice Spice, Jared Leto, Flavor Flav was there. If you saw the video of me and him hugging, I obviously know that he's a huge Swifty, but I was wearing like three friendship bracelets because I was prepared in case Taylor and Travis were going to be there. So I held it out. Out. And Flavor Flav has like a massive personality. Obviously, if you have seen any of his content, we know he is a Taylor lover, but he's also just like a kind of a goofball, like cornball person. He's walking down the carpet. It's like a significantly long walk for them to get to like the actual stairs of the theater. And he was like kind of like all over the place. And then I was like dangling the friendship bracelet out and he saw it. And he took the bracelet and then he came up and gave me like a giant hug as if we were like best long lost best friends. The video's up on on Swifty School, but it, it was kind of funny. And I was like, are you excited for Torture Poets Department? Anywho, so that was definitely the highlight of the experience and well worth it if you are wanting to experience that once in a lifetime sort of thing. For me, I'm like kind of insensitive to it because I obviously live here and I see celebrities and things like that a lot, but it's definitely still fun to see like behind the scenes. Like a lot of people were like freaking out because like a Fox News like reporter lady was there. Or I guess it's not Fox News. It was like Fox Fox and Fox News are different, right? I don't know. She was like apparently a popular reporter and she was standing there and everyone's like, oh my gosh. So I forget because I live here that that's like very exciting to someone who lives in like a very rural town. So that was fun and that was random. And Taylor ended up taking home. I've got it pulled up here for you. Da, 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 da. She was nominated for nine awards, and it looks like she took home six of those nine awards. Now, transitioning to my thoughts as to why she didn't make an appearance there. First, let me run you through the awards that she did win. Obviously, the biggest is Artist of the Year, Woot Woot, and she won Pop Artist of the Year, Tour of the Year, Best Lyrics, TikTok Bop of the Year, and Favorite Tour Style. I don't really know what tour style means, but I think it's funny. Favorite TikTok bop of the year is Cruel Summer. I don't know about you guys. I'll put this down in the Q&A box, perhaps. I would have said TikTok bop of the year would have been bejeweled, in my opinion, over Cruel Summer. I feel like Cruel Summer was popular in terms of like sharing your video of Taylor singing Cruel Summer from the Eras tour, but I feel like nobody was like dancing to it or anything. I feel like everybody was doing the bejeweled dance with the fingers from Michael, what's his last name? Astelio, I believe, the creator who made the Bejeweled dance. I feel like that's a strange choice for them to say bop of the year was Cruel Summer, but anywho, best lyrics is, is it over now? I would have to agree with that. I think I didn't see there were flashing lights. This to have the decency to keep my nights. Is that, am I singing the right song? I saw you down the by my hips and thighs, my whispered song. Oh, I think about jumping. Where I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the right song. I was like, I'm the right song. Anywho, Yahoo, great for Taylor. We love six awards and kind of iconic that she won six awards because we know we are waiting for da -da -da, Reputation TV. I'm not going to clown too much about Reputation TV because honestly, I need a little bit of like a Rep TV clowning break. Don't sue me. But I want to talk about Torture Post Department and how she really has not promoted it at all. I have some thoughts as to why she perhaps chose to not attend iHeart Awards. Now, I feel like it could be as nuanced as security wasn't tight enough and they couldn't make it work. Or what I was also thinking is maybe she's going to hold off on any sort of public appearances until the Met Gala, which is happening May 6th, which would be like two weeks after the release of torture post department i don't know i'm just kind of curious the angle with the lack thereof of marketing when it comes to torture post department we'll talk a little bit more about this with some of the swifty school submissions that you guys sent in but i want to know your thoughts like some of you guys think she's maybe going to do a single within the next like this week which i think would really be the last like viable week to do a single before the album because it really wouldn't have long enough to kind of like cycle through the radio and get going on social media and all of that. But maybe this week will be the week. Maybe by the time this comes out, we'll have a little sneak peek of something. And I would love to know your thoughts. If we are to get a single, what would your vote for single be? I talked about in my latest newsletter last week, my vote for first single 
my vote would I would love to have like so long London or but daddy I love him but I doubt she would do a track five as a single I think realistically especially because Post Malone's kind of having a moment right now he was just on Beyonce's album he's kind of been dabbling in country recently I think that Fortnite would be a good runner-up speaking of Post Malone and just like pop culture in general I would love to start sprinkling in you guys know I do Q&A episodes from time to time I try to do those every like fifth or sixth episode to get to know me more but I also thought it might be fun and I'm curious your thoughts and you can tell me like absolutely not I hate that idea and my feelings will be hurt but I would love to know and maybe vote below maybe we'll do a vote for that if you're listening on Spotify there's a vote feature down if you scroll in the episode description while you're listening I would love to know would you like me to integrate like a little kind of news segment or update for you guys every week on like what's happening pop culture wise or in the music industry i think it might be fun to talk about like some new songs that have been released what other artists have been up to and it could be quick like a quick little like bullet point overview but i'm really into music in general obviously and i think a lot of you guys i get the question all the time people are like oh do you exclusively listen to taylor or do you listen to other artists as well and i'm like no absolutely not like i'm a huge music lover i have been since i was a child my mom always tells the story that when she was pregnant with me she was a hostess at a restaurant and she would sit next to the jukebox because she couldn't walk like a lot she would just sit and she said she thinks that's why i love music so much is because literally throughout her whole pregnancy i was constantly listening to music so and they do say that you could hear while you're in the womb Love that fun fact. But I would love to know, do you want me to integrate like a, a segment beyond the submissions where perhaps I can talk like a little bit about pop culture and music? I think it could be fun. But if you want just Taylor, totally fine with me. I love both. I will do whatever you want. Now, let's transition to Swifty submissions because there's some good ones that were sent in this week. And I feel like you guys have a lot of thoughts, especially as we're going into Torture Post Department Month. Happy TTPD Month. <laughs> TTPD. TTPD. Let's talk about Swifty submissions. So this one's from Anonymous. They sent in a photo where basically it says three new trademarks have been registered by Taylor Nation or Taylor Swift. And they are Tay Play, Tay Play Studio, and Tay Instruments. And someone was saying they wanted to know if maybe this relates back to the rumor of her doing like some sort of conference or Taylor Con a while back. Something I heard, and if any of you guys are legal, girly pops, definitely chime in, is that Taylor's team is constantly kind of scanning the internet for potential opportunities to make sure that people aren't going to create something that could conflict with her brand. So my understanding, and I think I might have read an article on this or saw a video a long time ago that basically said they are going to submit for trademarks like these three all the time just to confirm that they own them, even if there is nothing that's actually going to happen with it. So like Loverfest is a great example. It never ended up happening, but they most definitely probably trademarked Loverfest. Is trademark the right word? I hope I'm saying that right. I always mix up trademark and copyright. So I have no idea what Tay Play, Tay Play Studio, Tay Instruments would be. I read through the comment section and a lot of people were hoping that like she was going to come out with like an app that'll teach you how to play guitar. Do I think that that's on Taylor Swift's radar? Absolutely not. But who knows? At this point, clown knows on honk honk, beep beep. I'm in the clown car ready for anything. Now the next one is from Anonymous. These are all from Anonymous, by the way. <laughs> so I don't have to keep saying that. But they sent in a video. I'm going to have it linked for you guys in the show notes. But the video is talking about how Billie Eilish allegedly was slamming Taylor Swift for creating so many vinyls or variants of her albums. Now, the hot tea with this one is that Billie Eilish had eight variants of her Happier Than Ever album. Not to say you can't come out with variants, but what she was specifically talking about is the fact that her vinyls were like compostable, 100% recycled, yada, yada, yada. Like they didn't all have different packaging. And she was basically bringing up or talking about the waste associated with vinyl variants. Now, I'm a big proponent of, I think there's a ton of waste in general. The United States, we are particularly awful with waste. I see it all the time with my job as an influencer, getting these big, giant, unnecessary PR packages with unnecessary things all of the freaking time. So I totally am aligned with like, waste is stupid. But it was pretty obvious that she was alluding to, she basically, she did say verbatim in this interview that the biggest artists in the world are even doing it, most likely talking about Taylor. Do I think that this is like bringing up some sort of like big bad beef between the two? Probably not. But my question with Taylor, and Taylor, if you're listening to this, hey girl, is when it comes to the merch and vinyls, 
everything seems to come on sale or go for sale, go on sale pretty far in advance. So I have a feeling the reason why is because it's technically pre-order, everything's pre-order, and then they don't actually make anything until it's actually like time to ship them. I could be wrong, but that would pretty much negate Billie Eilish's like statement if Taylor is just like producing these and not selling them. I don't know if anything is really not ever sold out on Taylor's website, but perhaps I'm totally wrong about that. I do think the conversation of waste is important and I'm sure Taylor's conscious of it. I'm really like, it's hard to speak on her like stance or viewpoint on that, but I think it's an interesting topic and I think waste is important and everybody should be conscious of it. Do I think Taylor's being not conscious of it by coming out with vinyl variants? No, because there's a market for it and people are buying it. So if people are buying them, it's not wasteful in my opinion, but they were going into landfill or something big issue but i I truly think that everyone's buying every single one of them and then if they're not people are buying them and then they'll be vintage in 20 years and triple their value so who knows now the last one is interesting it was another video that was sent through so i'll have it linked for you guys so you can reference that beforehand but it was basically talking about the met gala and they said i like the idea of tay and travis at the Met Gala together because of the full circle moment from her and Joe meeting there. I am team Travis will not be at iHeart because it does not seem like the big stage event that they would want to premiere at. I think the Met Gala could be an event that she might do it at. We know 2016 Met Gala was a full moment with Bleachella. This was such a moment that I was here for. This feels like a full circle that might signify moving past Joe with Torture Poets from it, and I think it could be fun. P.S. Love your content. Okay. I... I am aligned. I am very much aligned with Taylor foregoing attending iHeartRadio Awards, especially with Travis, which we know neither of those things happened, and deciding to opt for the bigger, better, more momentous moment of the Met Gala. I think I might do an episode fully on the Met Gala to brief you guys because this is truly, to be fully transparent, like where my content really started to pop off about a year or two ago. I think it was a year ago. I started talking a ton about the Met Gala, not Taylor specific. I did do Taylor videos on it, but I I just was like doing educational videos on the Met Gala, talking about the diamond, the Tiffany diamonds that Dua Lipa was wearing and all sorts of stuff and kind of the history behind the Met Gala and everything you need to know. So I might continue to do that. I'll do maybe an episode here and then talk about it over on Reagan Bailey. But the Met Gala is an interesting theme this year as well that seems to be very much aligned with Tortured Post Department and sort of like Taylor's current vibe, if you will. So the Met Gala is cool because every year it has a very interpretive theme. And what I mean by that is the theme is typically what you want. It's like a choose your adventure sort of thing. They give you the guidelines with the theme and then you do what you want. So everybody always takes it differently. So this year is Sleeping Beauty, and there's a little bit more to that I could look up specifically. So it the official title of the Met Gala this year is The Garden of Time, quote, Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. Official dress code is Garden of Time. Now, what I interpret this as, and a lot of people also are interpreting this as, is Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. Think sustainability. Think from the archives. Think vintage. Sleeping Beauties means it's been locked away in a closet for a long time. You're reawakening fashion. You are pulling it out of the archives. That is what a lot of people are taking it as. And then Garden of Time, you could take this literally and think of it as like very cottage core fairy girl vibe. Or you could think of it as like Garden of Time. Things get better with time. Pulling things out of the archives. They're going to be more interesting and you could add on to them like a garden do what you want with it. Now, I feel like because of the like poetic sort of metaphorical meaning of this Met Gala theme, it would align so perfectly with Tortured Post Department. And if we sort of saw Taylor do like a blackout adjacent moment where we don't really see much of her publicly, like interview wise, going to anything in between now and Tortured Post Department, I think having that like major, major, major PR moment at Met Gala just makes so much sense. What I would love to see Taylor wearing, I think, you know, I've talked about this before and I say this, I like what Sarah says from Taylor Swift styled, like critically kind commentary. I, you know, in the most critically kind way, I feel like sometimes Taylor's clothes wear her And I feel like she's finally gotten to a place establishing her voice and her place in the industry where she's able to express herself truly for who she is. And she, I think we've been seeing a lot more of her through her street style. And I would love to see that slowly start to transition, maybe not slowly, quickly, uh, transition to her red carpet fashion. So I think something from the archives that perfectly brings a marriage between her personality 
in the era of life that she's in, in love, romantic, something, you know, really dramatic and beautiful, but doesn't swallow her. That also is like, I'm trying to think of archival brands that might make a lot of sense on her. Like, I like Chanel as an idea because Taylor, I feel like, is a little bit preppy and poised, similar to Chanel. Versace, I know she is definitely a fan of, but to me, Versace skews a little bit edgy. And I think if talking about like the theme of like love and poetry and emotions, what's a brand that's like really ethereal? Like think Selkie, but like Taylor's not going to wear Selkie. I would have to stew on that. Maybe I'll do a video. Let me know if you guys have any like designers you think that would be a really good fit for that. From the archives though, that's the hard thing. It has to be a brand that's really established and been around. I don't know. I I'm going to stew on that one, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and if you think Taylor and Travis are going to make an appearance at the Met Gala because dun dun dun. Can you imagine? Can you even imagine? Oof, what I would do. What I would do to be a freaking guest at the Met Gala. That would truly be wild. Anyways, this was fun. I am always open to your guys' feedback, suggestions. Please make sure to subscribe to my newsletter as well. I just started answering Swifty submissions over in my newsletter. And you can uh, subscribe to my newsletter in my bio over on Reagan Bailey, I believe. We'll put the, the link to subscribe actually in the show notes as well. So you can just find it there. But I send out newsletters every Tuesday and Friday. One of those emails addresses some um, Swifty submissions. I'm always updating you guys on what to look forward to for the month giving you free downloads to random things that I create or Taylor-related stuff. And it's a little mixture, perfect marriage of my life and all things T-Swizz. So I'd love to have you there. And of course, over on my Patreon, where we'll be having our April TTPD clown call slash listening party. I'm so excited. I also have a free download for a very, very, very fun torture post department listening party document that you can use on April 19th. It's very fun. And all you have to do is become a Patreon member. Choose your tier, $2, $5, or $10. Is that right? Am I making that up? Yeah. Two, five, or 10. Choose your adventure. Each tier gets something different. Anywho, my name is Reagan. I am so glad you found this podcast. Please share it with a friend or don't. That's fine too. (laughs) Thanks for being here and I will see you on the next one. Bye. busy life can be and I am so grateful that you chose to stay 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 now just know this is me trying and I would greatly appreciate if you took a minute to leave a review or maybe share this episode with a fellow Swifty make sure you join my broadcast channel on Instagram for more Swiftivities and long story short this love is real and I'm beyond grateful for your support see you next time